One of the most fascinating insights I had about this thing called manifestation is that your reality is a hundred percent reflection of the day-to-day -day decisions that you make for yourself. Your day-to-day -day decisions are derived from your self-concept and your self-concept is then derived from your core foundational beliefs. And this was something that I failed to experientially understand for so many years just because I've never even realized that I had the fundamental belief that I didn't deserve the best of every every single area of my life and this may be the same for you and that's why in this video we are going to be exploring how to have a healthy self-concept and break all the limiting beliefs that stops you from not only achieving your material goals but stops you from having the best relationship with yourself. 1. The key I found to truly rewire your subconscious mind is to actually decide on the non-negotiables in your life and stick with it. For example, let's just say you try to change the foundational beliefs around you and how people treat you. You've always experienced people having transactional relationships with you and now you're trying to affirm that you accept yourself exactly as you are and people unconditionally love you for who you are. However, in the midst of you rewiring your subconscious mind, you are still tolerating people refusing to treat you with respect. In the midst of you turning on your affirmation tracks and telling yourself, I know my worth, I make self-honoring decisions and don't backtrack on those decisions. In your day-to-day -day life, you are still allowing people to step over you. That indicates that your reflection will probably only show you 70% of what you desire, but the other 30% will have a mixture of feeling mistreated, feeling unchosen, and feeling taken advantage of. So even though a lot of people say you must change your subconscious programming, but I didn't experientially or fundamentally understand this until I truly listed down what are the things I will no longer tolerate in my day-to-day -day life, whether it's skill tripping, whether it's any kind of workload that does not add value to my life or even pay me what I deserve. Although people in your reality will make you feel like you are a heroic person for taking on all the workload, for being a yes man, being a yes girl, being other people's doormats. But once you really come back and sit with the feeling, do you feel a sense of disrespect for yourself? Do you feel powerless? Do you feel small? Do you feel kind of fulfilled in the moment but unfulfilled in the long term? If these feelings are nagging you, you must decide to act on the non-negotiable negotiables. Do not settle for less than you deserve. Whether it's a crummy job where your boss not only underpays you but makes you feel small and diminishes your worth. Whether it's keeping friendship dynamics where you feel like you are constantly being a trauma punching bag. Actually this was something that I watched today in the CEO diary where Robert Greene was interviewed and he basically talks about this thing called frenemies and frenemies are those people that will come on so strong at you. They will tell you very fascinating stories and trying to build this bond with you too fast and too soon. But later on, they will actually try to wound you with their own wounds because of the feelings of envy. And no matter how many times you sit down to be a trauma punching bag for anyone, you would never create the life that you truly want by allowing energy vampires to suck the life out of you. So if you want to build a healthy self-concept, please give yourself permission to get rid of all the weeds in your mind, get rid of all the garbage in your real life, and love yourself so much that you will only allow nurturing experiences and nurturing people to come and grow with you along your journey. 2. Decide on the standards that you will not break for yourself and never actually break them. Now even though this may seem like a logical advice, but many many times we actually let our emotions dictate our logic, meaning that we make decisions based on how we feel and we use our brain to justify why our decision is the accurate one. For me in my case, when I freshly left this job that I felt diminished my worth, I started to feel so afraid of life because not only did I let go of a four years long-term relationship but now I don't have a source of steady income and what's even worse is that I was actually using that steady income to live in the exact location that I wanted to live in so if I lose all of this then who will I be and so from that wounded place I tried to seek out a sense of belonging I started looking out for communities and people outside of me to make me feel safe when actually that feeling of safetyness can only be created from within me so because I felt really worthless that I wasn't earning stable income anymore more, I would start to overcompensate by trying to prove my work by giving my 1000% effort in every free work that I did, hoping that when people discover my talents, they will refer me to a job, they will want to hire me, they will see my value, or I can somehow open career opportunities for myself. But after a year or two, it was evident that my leniency to 
keep saying yes, to keep working on things that didn't fulfill me, to keep people pleasing and not stick with my standards is because I had a low self-esteem. I didn't believe in my own inherent worth. In terms of my personal life, on the days where I feel so exhausted and I just want to eat to make myself feel comforted, I wouldn't be able to control myself from eating five to six pieces of Oreos a day as a minimum. And by the end of that day, I wouldn't even know what I actually ate because I just kept snacking without even consciously documenting down what has my stomach just taken in. This standard not only led me to gaining weight, but it led me to feeling really, really crap about myself. Because what this behavior communicated with myself is that I had no sense of self-respect. If I truly respected my body, why would I allow so much grease, so much rubbish, so much randomness to keep entering it, knowing that I love being fit and pretty? And that's the day I truly realized that the key to permanent weight loss is actually not about just meal plans or workout plans, but it's about setting standards that you would never break for yourself. So that's why last year, I really fell in love with the process of doing beach clips because it forced me to keep standards that I cannot break. If I travel to a beach and it takes two to three hours to get to that beach and I feel lethargic, I don't have energy to push up on the sand. I can't maintain my flexibility. I can't even do squats on the sand. Then I would feel so bad about myself. So the pain of breaking my standards really, really outweighs the pleasure of seeking junk food or behaviors that don't serve my growth. And again, if you're able to compound the number of times you're able to fight against the weak you by keeping your standards, of course your self-concept will change. Now the thing is, beliefs actually shift easier when you see physical evidences, at least from yourself making those changes. So if you can see that I can control the portion of my food really easily, I can easily get myself to do a 15 minute stretch, to go for a seven kilometers walk once a week, then your beliefs will actually automatically shift into, I respect myself, I value myself, I see myself as the prize. So it's kind of like this feedback loop where beliefs, action, action, belief. The more you take action, the more your belief solidifies. And the more you solidify that belief, the action also follows that belief. It's a win-win situation if you can just stick to the standards. So again, I would like you to get out a pen and paper and write down what are the standards in your love life, in your career, in your eating habit, in your health and fitness, in your friendship dynamic, and in other areas of your life that you will never ever break for yourself because you love yourself that much. Three, you're going to conquer self-mastery by committing to high value habits that make you feel like a diamond. Now, what do I mean by this? It means that once you make a promise to yourself, you will do anything at all costs to keep that promise to yourself. For example, in my case, I am not in a financial position right now to afford better equipment to do my YouTube. So everything is manual labor from filming and editing. And right now I'm only editing using a MacBook, not even a MacBook Pro. And honestly, the laptop is getting slower and slower. So that means I have to discipline myself to work even harder to get all these tasks done on time. In order for you to trust my channel, I have to stick to my deadlines. And on the outside, it may look easy for us to meet those deadlines, but behind the scene, there are so many processes that goes into making quality videos. And if I have loose habits in other areas of my life outside of YouTube, I don't think my YouTube would actually take off at all. So what I'm trying to say is that your work is an extension of you. The quality of your work, the quality of your interviews with your hiring managers, the quality of your speeches, the quality of everything that you execute starts from the quality of your core self. And you must nurture your core self with high value habits to the point where you look at yourself and you're like, I am a diamond and I truly believe that because my actions support those beliefs. So now you want to reverse engineer this concept and say, what are the sets of habits that makes me feel like a queen? In my case, I've tried doing really extreme workouts before and that doesn't make me feel like a queen. You have to acknowledge what works for your body, what works for your mind, and what works for this stage of your life right now. And then refine those habits that make you feel like, yes, every day I'm winning at those goals. And that's why it's so easy to set goals like, get onto your yoga mat and do a 15 minute stretch, or choose one affirmation track for 10 minutes and just listen to it for 10 minutes before you get out of bed. This is something that has made the most tremendous shift in my life because once compounded over time, you start to see yourself as somebody that just wins so many times times. Therefore, I never feel like I'm losing or lagging behind. And this also goes the same with bigger areas of life, such as work. Instead of you saying, I want to make 250 grand 
therefore I have to be that person today. It's so much easier for you to first understand yourself and your capacity today, then second, design habits that support your capacity today. So perhaps 250 grand is a bit of a stretch today. It doesn't mean you won't achieve it, but for today, why don't we aim for something smaller first and achieve it as soon as we can so that we feel the pre-winning feeling before we achieve the next big goal. In my case, it was also the subscriber numbers. Instead of me trying to be like, I really, really want 100 grand subscribers and my one video has to go viral today. When I focus on the incremental micro habits, such as before I film a video, I have to successfully do my makeup and dress up properly and even wear fake nails because it makes me feel pretty. So why don't I focus on doing that successfully as frequently as I can? Because if I feel confident, the video will be successful and it will resonate with more people. So I hope you see where I'm going with this. Instead of you trying to achieve and attain the goal, you want to work on bridging that gap between your current self and your future self by designing micro habits that slowly moves you closer and closer and closer and closer to who you want to be. And the smallest mundane things like get your makeup right, do your hair right, get your hygiene right, make your bed even if you think it makes no difference, portion out your meals accordingly, give yourself permission to eat what you like but at the right portions. Make sure to also celebrate your wins and give yourself the exact experiences that you want after you've worked very very hard. What are the habits that work for you? Is it bike riding once a week? Is it doing long walks once a week? Find the habit combinations that work for you that get your body moving and soon you'll see yourself as becoming the person who is fit, who is disciplined and keeps promises to themselves. And once you keep those promises to yourself, your self-respect will have to keep increasing, which that high value sense of self will reflect on how people respond to you in your 3D reality. No longer will you tolerate bull once you see that, oh my God, I am a diamond, which then leads to the final point, And that is challenge yourself every month or better yet, every fortnight and get out of your comfort zone. One of the things that really, really frightens me is working on projects all alone for many, many, many hours. Because when I work so hard on these projects alone, I start to feel fear of missing out. I start to wonder how good it would feel if I was swimming in that ocean water right now. My comfort zone personally was actually speaking in front of people. As a child, I was always put on stage to perform. So I never really had stage fright and I always like seeking validation by doing public speaking and allowing people to hear my stories. But then when you really step back and look at real life, what does it truly take for me to win in this world? Therefore, I have to get really clear with myself and ask me, am I still going to stay in my comfort zone of seeking validation by speaking in front of other people or am I going to get the hard work done? Sit down, focus on the editing, focus on doing the contents properly so that my YouTube channel grows. What is more important? And the next thing I want you to ask yourself is what do you feel scared of doing? Are you scared of swimming? Something that I couldn't do at the end of 2021 but because I conditioned myself to get out of my comfort zone I ended up doing 40 laps within 10 months after not being able to swim in the baby pool. And does that increase my self-concept? Definitely. Does that help me overcome my limiting beliefs that I cannot swim? Definitely. And that could be the same for you. Do you fear of spending time alone in restaurants? Do you fear that people will look at you and be like why is she at a romantic restaurant by herself? Where her partner. Once I overcame that fear that people will see me as a loner, I felt so much flexibility to go anywhere without having to expend my energy, having to serve other people in their presence. I can just go to any bars, go to any restaurants, order whatever I want and have the time of my life. I don't even have to worry. Are they going to come late? Are they going to come early? Are they free at this time? Are they not free at this time? When I want to go, I just go. And my question to you is, are you willing to do the same? Can you overcome the fear of being seen as a loner in a public setting and just do what you like when you want to do it. Because I promise you, once you experience that extra layer of freedom, that freedom where I don't have to wait for a guy to take me out to a bar, I'm going to dress up and take myself to the bar. Regardless if there are a couple sitting all around me and I'm just a one loner in that bar, I'm still going to take myself out because it's fun. Imagine if you are able to break this barrier, will this increase your self-esteem? Will this improve your self-concept? 100%. So to summarize this video, of course listening to affirmation tracks right when you wake up and before you go to sleep can help rewire your subconscious. But I have done this before and I personally feel like it comes in conjunction with me taking specific sets of action in my day-to-day -day life. So after I do my affirmations in a drowsy state and really hone into that feeling of living in the end state, in my day-to-day -day life I must also commit to certain habits that make me feel like a diamond. I must also expand outside of my comfort zone to prove to myself that I'm a flexible person. I'm always evolving and I always bring myself freedom to experience the best things in life. And in order for us to be fully, fully happy with ourselves, we must feel self-respect from within. And self-respect from within is 
so much harder to feel when we tolerate bull treatments, when we tolerate toxicity and pettiness in our life. Therefore, nobody deserves an excuse as to why they should give us constant anxieties. Nobody deserves an excuse as to why they should always drain our energies. If that person is not willing to do the inner work to elevate with you, you are not going to bring them into your future. And that also comes with sticking to your standards. If your actions are clear, then you will not dip below the standards. Humans don't fight to reach their fullest potentials, but humans will really, really fight to never go below their standards. If the bare minimum standard that you expect from yourself is already high, then no matter if you get tired or dip here and there, you will never go below that high standard that you already have for yourself. Therefore, you will always be in the momentum to keep leveling up. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please feel free to subscribe and let us know what kind of videos you want to see next. I am so excited to keep growing on this journey with you and I can't wait to share more with you. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.